Welcome to this War Games Delivered painting tutorial for Bolt Action Band of Brothers. I'll be showing you how to paint a late war German Grenadier officer using the War Games Delivered Mega Paint Set, so sit back and get ready to follow along. So to get started painting this German officer, the first thing I've done is primed it using Uniform Grey, which is a great way of getting started. Uh, and gives you a nice grey colour. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all of the metallics and the reason I'm painting all of the metallics and indeed some of the darker leather colours is because I want to give them all the same shade before I come back in and highlight everything up and I'm using gunmetal uh, to base all of these silver areas. So there's a few on the model um, I'm focusing mainly on on the weapon here um, but you can check the box art if you're not entirely sure or check some images on Google. Um, but just get that painted and then when we come back uh, we'll do the leather straps before we have a look at giving everything an all over shade. To base all of the leather straps the colour I'm going to use is oak brown which is a, a nice dark brown. So we're just going to pop this over. Now as I'm applying it I can see it's not covering very well. So what this means is I'm going to need to use two uh, coats to get the coverage I want. So I'm just going to take my time, let that first coat dry, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to I'm going to put a second coat on. So just make sure you get all of the straps as well. It's got the bit going around the top of the uniform, and then when that's all dry, we'll come back in uh, and we'll we'll shade everything uh, before we start to think about how we're going to get all the uh, various bits and pieces highlighted. Before we start shading I'm going to pop this oak brown over the boots as well. Uh, again being careful leaving the kind of the strapping and the gaiters because we'll do them a, a different colour. Uh, but the boots themselves are brown. I did think they were uh, they were black but on closer inspection they are brown. So I'm just going to paint those with this oak brown as well because it's the darkest brown we've got. And especially once it's shaded as well, it'll look uh, it'll look even darker. The first shade we'll use is some dark tone, and we're going to use this over all of the bits that we've already painted. So where we've got the uniform and the metallics, as well as the brown leather, and you can see there that it actually goes into those recesses really nicely, uh, and gives uh, a nice effect there on the uniform. So. Just spread this around all those bits, work it into those recesses. If you get it pooling like this, then before it dries, just pop your brush in and move it around so that uh, it doesn't become too much of a problem and make the uniform look too dark. Once that shade is dry, we will start to highlight the uniform first. So the colour we're going to use is uniform grey. All we're looking to do is is really leave that shade in the recesses and just paint the kind of raised folds of the fabric. So I'm just showing you on the jacket here because it's uh, it's easier for me to demonstrate that on camera. Now it is very shiny, the, the dark tone has made it very shiny but we'll dull it all down at the end once we're finished. So for now just work your way around the model and catch those kind of raised areas. If you need to add uh, a second layer of paint to make sure it covers properly, like you can see in this area here, then we'll do that. But just make sure the first layer is dry. And once that's done, we'll come back and highlight the leather next. We'll highlight that grey further. Just one more step. And the colour we're going to use this is ash grey. Now it's important that we've got a good point on our brush for this. And again, what we're looking to do is just catch those most raised areas. Just to highlight and add a little bit of interest for when this model's on the tabletop. So nice and easy like that. Get all that highlighting finished. Uh, when that's done, we'll come back and we'll do the leather next. So to highlight the brown, we're going to use uh, leather brown. And similar, we're just going to look to highlight those kind of raised parts uh, like we did with the... Uh, with the uniform but we don't have to worry so much about um, all, the, all the kind of major raised bits and where we can we can like drag the brush along the edges there like that so make sure you highlight all the bits that are that are facing upwards and you can see it's a really nice simple highlight uh, on that leather 
do the boots as well so I can add some of that definition back into to the footwear again nice and easy nice and simple so just work your way all the way around the model highlighting all that leather exactly the same um, and we'll come back and we'll do the um, we'll do the additional pouches next uh, we're making pretty good progress we'll do the pouches next and then we'll do the the gun stock uh, and we'll finish up with the flash we'll base up the other bits of packs and there's a flask there just with some army green so just to reiterate as well it, it, it the model does look a little weird at the moment because you've got glossy shadows uh, and matte highlights and obviously we want it all to be the same so just to say we will fix that uh, as the last stage so just going to get this army green over the rest of the pack items nice clear coverage and then once that's dry uh, we'll come back and shade it once that's dry we'll shade the area with military shader so this is a, a very subtle shade which means we can save some time we don't have to go back in and, and rebase the military green uh, it's a really nice uh, really nice shade actually it's one of my favorite in this range and you can see there it really just gives you that nice color so get that done and, and again if you're painting a different model to this so that you've put more bags on make sure you do those as well uh, we let that dry and we'll come back and highlight it we'll highlight the kind of baggage with some necrotic flesh and just popping this into kind of some of the raised areas and along the edges that catch the light you don't want to be too extreme with this, but just work it on there. And the other thing you can do as well is you can just stipple little dots on there to kind of give the impression that uh, it's a bit of material as opposed to something smooth and metallic. So nice and easy, nice and simple. So get that done, and we'll do the uh, well, we'll do the gaiters uh, on his boots next. We'll base the gaiters using hemp rope now. Don't worry too much about the clasps on them because you can go back in and we can paint those over later. Now, this is fairly bright, so we are going to need to tone it down. We are potentially also going to need to think about putting a second coat on as well, just to make sure that we've got nice even coverage all around. So do both legs. And we'll we'll do that shade, and then when we come back, we'll uh, we'll pop some some quick highlights on there as well. To save overusing colours, I think we'll shade those gaiters using uh, the military shader as well. And again, this is partly because the the look we need to go for is kind of like a greeny yellow, uh, and by shading them with this, it gives you that kind of excellent uh, looking greeny yellow that uh, that we want. So. Just pop that on there nice and easy, let that dry, and we'll come back and highlight. Catch the outside of those gaiters now. We're going to use a fairly bright highlight. Uh, we're going to use uh, Drake Tooth, but we're just going to focus along the kind of the, just along the edges. Just like that. And that'll just give you that little bit of a highlight that will blend into the model as it dries. Which, should give you a nice effect and again we're keeping this really nice and thin in terms of the lightness we're drawing so it gives you a really nice even though it's a bright color a nice subtle highlight paint the weapon stock next and the color I'm going to use this is desert yellow now anything that's got the word yellow in the name tends to have fairly poor coverage it's just the nature of the pigment so just thin your paint a little bit with a spot of water and then pop it on now that's one coat and it's not covered fantastically so I'm gonna have to just let that dry and add another coat on there and then once that's dry um, we'll have a little look at shading it a little bit and then highlighting it as well so just take your time with it let it dry obviously if you're painting more than one model at once go and go and do them all uh, and then we'll come back to it we'll shade that top uh, stock using a little bit of 
strong tool just to give it a little bit of definition don't want to flood the area and obviously we want to be careful around those parts that we've finished as well so we let that dry and then we'll highlight it and we'll put a, a wood texture on it as well to give it a nice effect so once we're happy that that's dry the first thing we'll do is go back to that desert yellow and make sure you've got a thin point on your brush and what we'll do is we're just going to paint thin lines along the length of the stock just like that now don't worry if the coverage isn't fantastic we're not going to worry too much about putting a second coat on it what we're really doing there is we're just getting it ready for a, a lighter highlight see there it gives you a nice effect to start with we're just doing that for a lighter highlight uh, which we'll do next so that light highlight is with skeleton bone so again this is make sure you've got a good tip on your brush and we're just looking to just gently paint those small sharp lines in over the desert yellow highlight and you can see there that you've got a nice wood grain effect so that's that done we'll do uh, the face next and we'll have a look at bringing the model together with some matte varnish so we'll base the flesh using barbarian flesh so this is I've thinned this down a little bit I'll just put a little touch of water in there so it's very thin uh, and that's to make sure that we don't obscure any detail but you can see the grey underneath showing through so it does mean we're going to have to put uh, two maybe three coats on there because I've thinned it down uh, but that's okay don't forget to do the hands and any other exposed flesh areas uh, that you've got there so build that up to a nice solid color and then we'll come back and shade it before we highlight we'll shade all that flesh using flesh wash now this can be fairly stark uh, in comparison to um, to just the, the plain flesh colour we've got uh, got down so it's important that it doesn't pull too much just work it round into those recesses and then what we'll do is once that's dry we'll build that that bright uh, luminescent flesh back up once that's dry we'll go back to barbarian flesh and start to highlight the face and what we're looking for are those raised areas such as the nose uh, the cheekbone around the ears the chin and we'll do the lips as well just to leave that flesh shade in the recesses and build up some differentiation through the layers they're nice and easy just like that and of course on the hands we're just looking to trace uh, the fingers you can see now it's starting to get a bit brighter we'll put a final highlight on the flesh uh, and then we'll just got a couple of bits to finish up final bright highlight we're going to go for is with corpse pale and again this is going to be a lot brighter than that uh, initial kind of barbarian flesh color that we've got down but it's okay because it, as it dries it'll kind of blend in a bit so again focusing for those kind of prominent areas that are just uh, that you can see such as the the cheekbone the nose etc and then when it comes to the hands again just tracing along the fingers uh, onto the knuckles as well use this fairly sparingly uh, we've just got a couple of bits to do on this guy now so we've got the peak of the hat and his hair which we'll do next and then we'll chuck some matte varnish on him just to unify uh, the colour on him uh, and then we'll base him and we're done for the peak of the hat we're just going to take some matte black take your time around obviously the flesh bits on the bottom side where it's been finished you see I've already kind of started across the top so just pop that on there and that gives you a really nice effect so that's the offset done we'll pop some matte varnish on next I'll show you how to do that then we base him and then we're done so with the matte varnish we just want to paint it all over the model um, what's really important is that we don't put it on too thickly because if we put it on too thick it can sometimes struggle to dry and you'll be left with some some ugly tide marks so just work it all around and if you see it starts to pull then just wick it away quickly with your with your brush uh, now this will help unify all of the model so again take your time work your way around and give it a good 
good length of time to dry before you think about handling it as well. So there we are, like I said, paint that all over, get it into all those recesses, especially where the, uh, the model is shiny. And then once it's dry, you should have a nice matte effect that uh, will look great on the tabletop. With the matte varnish dry, you can see that uh, the model is dulled down and, and looks pretty good. So I'm going to paint the base and paint the edge, and I'm going to use a kind of a dirty dark green, which is uh, elf green. Now you can paint these whatever colour you like. Uh, this is just the colour I've chosen, and this is covering quite well, so we might get away with just, uh, just the one coat there. Uh, but let that dry, and then once it's dry, we will base the model. And then we are done. Basing the model's easy. I've got a pot of mixed materials here. And all I've done is I've painted some PVA glue on the base. And just pop your model in there. Tap it on the side. And then you can let that dry. That's the basing done. And there we have it. This German Grenadier offset is done and ready for the bolt action battlefield. Make sure you check out all of our other tutorials so you know how to paint the whole box. And we're also going to be giving away one Band of Brothers set to a lucky winner. You have just two days to enter from the release of this video, so make sure you do so using the link in the description. Remember to check out Wargames Lived for all your wargaming and hobby needs. Our link is below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.